race. I've been saved by the race. My name is in the book of life, and my sins are washed away. Saved by grace. I've been saved by the race. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by the race. Thank you for joining us for Not Without Blood. We, uh, as we continue to <clears throat> study God's Word, hope you take a, a notepad and a pencil and sit down with us, get your Bible, get you a cup of coffee a, as we continue our study on covering and <clears throat> whether or not the covering that we hear portrayed so much on uh, Christian TV. Uh, covering, they are my covering. They are my spiritual covering. They are my father uh in the in the spirit they are or this or they are that we're looking at that and finding out whether or not it is a biblical based doctrine you know we see so many times that people that are elected and, and i'll just use this as an example people that are elected to an administrative position either in the body of, of christ in a, in a local church <clears throat> in a state headquarters in a national denomination when they are elected to a or appointed to a administrative position somehow that administrative position then becomes a spiritual position that I can now dictate to you how you can worship by what songs you sing or how you sing or by what songs you don't sing or by what message you portray to the, uh, from the pulpit to the pew. There are so many different forms of this doctrine that is unscriptural, that is in the body of Christ. We don't even look at it as error because it really appeals to the flesh. It really appeals to our nature. And if it is appealing to our nature, then it's appealing to our Adamic nature. It's appealing to the sinful nature not the divine nature that is in us according to what Peter tells us, that we can have the divine nature of God in us. So we're trying to establish that there is a scriptural covering, but it is the blood of Jesus, it is the Lord Jesus Christ, and all of this other doctrine that comes under the heading of who's my covering, Who's my father in the ministry? Who's my father? Uh, whatever terminology you want to put on it. Comes under the spirit of witchcraft. And what do I mean by that? If it pertains and any of it has to do with intimidation, manipulation, domination, control. Exodus tells us that is the spirit of witchcraft. And we need to stay away from it. As we've said before, we don't walk, we run away from it. So again, on today's program, I'd like to uh, introduce to you our panel. On uh, your left, my far right, is Dr. Michael Lee from uh, uh, Florida. He has uh, a Christian network of, of uh, TV stations in northwest uh, Panhandle of Florida. And we are on... Uh, his station every night uh, through uh, his blessing the ministry tremendous amount over the last couple of years and uh, we are broadcast there and we are very appreciative next to him is Alan Abayan de Guzman from Philippines and then next to me is uh, Presley Watson which is a missionary to the Philippines and I'm just going to be the moderator and, and try to let everybody get in what they want to say. Uh, we'll start off again tonight with, uh, you know, I'm going to give an example of myself and then let the gentleman tear it apart. Uh, Crossway Ministries, which produces Not Without Blood, never has been under a denomination, a local church, or a uh, individual. Now a lot of people will be turned off by that, <clears throat> but I am not going to put a call and an anointing to do what is you've been called to 
and separate me from God by putting a man in between. I have one mediator, and that is Christ Jesus. Just read the book of Hebrews. So, Crossway Ministries is not a long ranger. It's under the uh, direction of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit can lead me much better than man can lead me if I will submit to him. So we, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that, we're not a long ranger, but we are being led by the Spirit as far as what to teach, what to proclaim, how to teach it, how to proclaim it. And I believe uh, the gentleman on the panel uh, will agree with that. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, He's the one that shed His blood for me on Calvary. He's the one that died for me. He's the one that rose and in that resurrection gave me a resurrection life. No man can do that for me. So, as we start off, Presley, what are your thoughts on should a ministry be under uh, an organization, a denomination, or man? Yeah, um, y you know, the when when we submit fully to God, what we're not see what we're not saying we don't need nobody. What we know, nope. not at all. What we're just you know, one thing that um, God did in my life when I understood that Christ alone is the covering is God um, gave me more connections with people. Right. And that's the balance. We're, you know, we're, we're connected with people, but as far as people being over us instead of Christ, that, that's where we come in error. Right. Because there's only one mediator between God and man. It's Christ himself. Uh, Michael, how do yeah. you feel? Um, absolutely the same. I, um, I don't want us to come across as um, that we are arrogant or that we've right. got knowledge that other people don't have. Mm -hmm. um, and this really isn't revelation. The entire Reformation was fought on this very point. Yeah. Right. If you was to ask Christians today, even those of you watching, um, how many of you believe you need a priest to mediate to God for you? Right. That you have to go to this priest? Very few of you would say, I believe that we need that priest. Right. Mm -hmm. We've changed the word from priest to covering. Yes, and it's so exactly. much easier to yeah. accept yeah. now right. because we're not going to the booth. Mm -hmm. We're not going to confess anything. We've now just got this priest or covering that's just going to look out for us, going to protect us. You know, mm -hmm. somehow, um, my bishop living in Orlando, Florida, um, is going to make it possible that when I lay my hands on a sick lady, in Destin, Florida, that she's going to be healed somehow because I connected to him right. both financially and he laid his hand on me and sent me forth. You know, I went through the process, right. the religious process. And not to mention that prior to doing that, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, instructed by God Himself to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creation. Right. And these signs would follow them that believe. It doesn't say in Mark 16, these signs shall follow them that are covered by a bishop. These signs shall follow them that have obeyed the authority. I'm blessed because I'm covered. It doesn't say it. No. Mm -hmm. The prerequisite is simply to believe. believe. And when I believed, I became empowered by the baptism of the Holy Spirit on me. Right. And that power is given to me by God and God alone. Right. And the Spirit of God is my teacher guides me and teaches right. me. I love the instructions of other men. I love listening to We all to learn preachers. from each right. other. Iron sharpens iron. Right. This is biblical to be even doing what we're doing. Right. Right? To sit and listen to a man preach the gospel is biblical. It's all wonderful. But not to um, yield right. your yeah, authority yeah. and all of your... Because you, they yield their spiritual authority to this guy. Right. Right. So that's why the devil comes in your house and beats you up because you gave your authority to this guy. Right. Yeah, the, the, the danger too is when when we're thinking that the pastor is the covering, here's the, the error. Anything he preaches, whether it's right or wrong, the people receives it as the Word of God. Right, right, right. But once we see the that final right, word, that's yeah. it. And, and what, once we begin to believe and see that Christ alone is a covering that protects us, because now we have discernment. Right, right. Yeah. And, and when, as we mentioned on previous program, when that veil is finally rent, that is... A covering of our heart from letting the true, the truth of the gospel in. 
God gives us so much more revelation. Right. The Word becomes alive. The, the Word becomes a, just an open book that you can understand and receive from. He gives us that revelation far more than you're ever going to receive under under law or under a false covering from mankind. What are your feelings? You know, I just remember what, I was, uh, what you guys were sharing. One of the uh, time in the Philippines, uh, in our city or in our islands, uh, the tribal leaders that got born again, got radical for Jesus, and uh, a lot of them, they always depend on their pastor. So they have to walk for hours, how many hours, okay, to to lay uh, to bring their sick child or yeah. wife or or brother or sister or mother. So I came in radically, and, and I didn't know this till afterward. I got rebuked of it because I told him, I said, you don't even have to go to your pastor mm -hmm. for God to heal you. The wow. healing has already taken care of the cross. Right. All you have to just believe and receive. Right. You know, we believe on lay hands. You know, you lay hands yourself or your wife, whatever the believers in your, your household. And so afterward, I was rebuked because yeah. they've been taught, you know, you, you don't teach it that way. You, you submitted everything to the pastor. Mm -hmm. And I said, I've never been taught that way. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've been taught that Christ in you, you know, right. uh, you have the anointing, you know, you have the power, you have the divine power of God, you know, that you can lay hands on the sick. So... These pastors and ministers on the tribe from different mountains, Brother Leroy, was so, it's like, it was just like an eye opener to them that, hey, it will save me days of walking. It will save me hours of walking. You know? A and, lot and, of work. Yes. But it's been taught like that for years because certain denomination, you know, I don't want to mention name, but they've been taught that way. Right. They was limited. You know, they, they were controlled. You know, those, right. those things and... I, I believe it was ignorant. I, I believe it was ignorant that, that they couldn't do that. They have to do this and to do that. They had to perform that. And, and, and there's no such thing as people praying for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that limits and shuts off individual prayer, intercession prayer, sure. that we can, you know, i got to go down and let somebody right. else pray for right. me. Right. Uh, that doesn't work, does it? I mean, it take it... it Again, and, it, and that, you know cultures from overseas, you know, much better. You guys, missionaries over there. But the Western culture, American church, um, basically, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Mm -hmm. What's the need of having all these churches all over the place when basically they're going to say and do the same things? And what they do is build. I mentioned it in an earlier. They, they concentrate on the castle mm -hmm. instead of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And we're building this castle, and we have authority and structure. And boy, you go to the church, and everything works well. As far as church is concerned, right. mm -hmm. but um, there's so many. There's so many, and there's a church that comes to mind, and I definitely wouldn't call names, but beautiful church, great congregation, one of the largest churches in our area down in Florida. But um, they specifically say now there's no speaking in tongues in, in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. There's no prayer for the sick in the auditorium. We don't want to do that here. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be we wanted to be sensitive to those that are. Out. We want to be sensitive to those that are. Uh, uh, among us, we want to really be sensitive. You know, Jesus, the Greeks are here. Jesus, you know, right. help us, Lord. The Greeks are here, and He says, right. "Except the corn of wheat fall on the ground and die, you abide alone." Right. And it sounds like He's not even paying attention because He wasn't impressed with the Greeks. Mm -hmm. But we impress ourselves with these people, and they are in a way controlling, manipulating us so right. to not do certain things. When what I think needs to happen is we need to rear back and let the Holy Ghost have His way in that yeah, congregation, right. and then you would find that divorces would would cease or not be near as prevalent. You right. would find disease and sickness would go true. away. The church would be the same church we saw in the book wow. of Acts right. where they healed people on the way to church. Right. See, right. We, we have to come to church, come up, but they don't even do that anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. even, and in that particular place, they don't have prayer for the sick. Mm -hmm. You know, and if after a sermon is preached, um, they, they have people come and stand in the front, and but those people are instructed to not demonstrate any power or anything with... Wow. Just just wow. pray with them and counsel them. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm saying to myself, it's one of the most powerful in terms of church church, churches out there. Mm -hmm. But yet it is so structured and so friendly to everyone that no one's wow. offended. It's so politically correct mm -hmm. that it has a form of godliness. Right. No power. Right. This, I'll go back to my scripture uh, just one more time. In Isaiah 30, uh, verse 2, it says they walk to go down into Egypt. 
they want to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen them. Uh, he says that they want to go down, meaning they had already started to go down into Egypt. Mm -hmm. They didn't even counsel God. They had already started. You know, God was a second thought. The first thought was to go down and get counsel from Egypt. And and what? why is that wrong? Why is it wrong to, to go to the world? Why is it wrong to go this? Because we have the infallible leadership of the Holy Spirit. We have the infallible leadership of the Holy Spirit instead of man. Man is fallible. He can make errors. Holy Spirit won't. So when we get away from that, uh, infallible Holy Spirit, we just open ourselves up for error. Mm -hmm. and, and, and error comes in and abounds. Uh, I'll read a couple of short scriptures just to uh, let y'all make comment on. Uh, you know, we have a saying as we mentioned, who's your spiritual father? Uh, very prevalent in the body of Christ today. My question is, who was the spiritual father of Paul and who was the spiritual father of Abraham? Come on. Who was, who was the spiritual father of Moses? Mm -hmm. Who was the spiritual father of David, Daniel? Mm -hmm. You know, it was a man. Mm -hmm. They they didn't have coverings. You know, just God. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to get back to. Mm -hmm. To me, you know, I, I don't find uh, Abraham having a spiritual father, and uh, I don't think any of us have done as much as Abraham. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Can't can't do it. Uh, 1 Timothy 2 5 says, one mediator. Uh, 1 Peter 2 4 through 10 says, we are to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God because my spiritual sacrifices to God is acceptable to Him only through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't go through man to offer my spiritual sacrifice, do I, Michael? That's absolutely correct. Um, and I don't want to take. You know the lion's share of the time, but if, if you don't mind, if you're at home and you need some scriptures, a lot of people want to see Bible for right, what we're yeah, saying. Right. Uh, first of all, I want to list <coughs> all of the scriptures which teach that you, there's a spiritual covering by submission to delegated authority. And I'm just going to spit them out real quick, yeah. so if you've got a pencil, write them down. That's it. There are, there are none. <laughs> there are no scriptures that teach spiritual submission by delegated authority. Did you get all those? <laughs> but now let me read you a few that scriptures which teach spiritual covering to be Jesus and Jesus alone. Right. Uh, Brother Leroy just read 1 Timothy 2, 5, for there is right. one God and one mediator between God, right. and that's the man Christ Jesus. Then 1 John 2, 24 tells us the anointing which you've received from Him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things that is true and is not a lie, just as it, it has taught you, you will abide in Him. John 16, 13, that He the Spirit of truth has come. 1 Peter 2, 4, a holy priesthood, a royal priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God only through Jesus Christ. Mm. Psalms 27, uh, Psalms 140 and 7, Psalms 105, Isaiah 4. So we can continue going on and on and right. on with <clears throat> Scriptures that teach that God or Jesus, depending on which in the Old right. or New Testament, is the covering for our spiritual walk. And we right. do not submit to or answer to another man. And we may have to edit this out, and it'll be okay. But so many people say, Mike, you just go overboard. You're just way too, your examples are just way overboard. You're just way too passionate. And I take my lead from Paul in Galatians when he was talking about circumcision. Mm -hmm. He said, and if you read it in the Message Bible, it says, I just assume you castrate yourself if you want to. That's what he said. Cut it all off if you want. I don't care what you cut off. But I'm telling you, that's not going to save you. Uh -huh. so, well, Paul, get it done. so when Paul so says it yeah. like that, you, know, you can say whatever you want. It's radical. But I'm telling you today, I would rather be considered a radical outsider and know that I'm connected directly yeah. to God, led by the Holy Spirit, than to be submitted to some twice dead, plucked up by the root ministry that that does a lot of churchy things, but no real, real book of Acts. Book, book of Acts. Thing. Wow. A couple of other scriptures. Uh, we'll add to that. Matthew 23, 8 through 12. It says, "Do not call anyone on this earth Father." Absolutely. And then it says, whoa, whoa, whoa. I love it. You know, Matthew 28, 8 through 12. 2 Corinthians 1, 24. 
<clears throat> not that we have dominion over your faith. Mm -hmm. Paul was over. Paul was not lording over the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing a lot of people are going to bring up is uh, Matthew eight five through thirteen. Well, now, Leroy, don't you know that the centurion was under authority, and don't you know that the rec that centurion recognized that Jesus was under authority and that that's the reason that Jesus was able to do anything because he was under authority. The centurion was under a structure of authority. Different ranks. Jesus was not under the structure of authority. He was only under the Father. That's what we've got to be. It's only under the Father. Led by the Holy Ghost. Not under a structure just like the centurion was at different levels in the army. Mm. Uh, don't try to apply that verse out of context and say there's biblical authority for you and your ministry to be under uh, some other ministry. <clears throat> no, you're misapplying scripture because Jesus was only under the authority of the Father. Absolutely. That's so, that is absolutely correct. And when you look at it in that context, Jesus said, I only do what my Father <laughs> right. says do. And in another place, he's telling Peter, who do men say that I am? Peter says, you're Christ, the Son of God. And he said, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father. So even, even Peter mm. was submitted to the Father. Because right. he's a brother. Christ is our brother. And the more we look at this, and we continue to see how that only the reason Christ could do the miracles is he was submitted to the Father. And Christ says to us, greater works than this shall ye do because I go to my Father. Father. And when He submits to the Father, that's His way of decaying because he, he didn't return to dust from whence He came because He didn't come from the dust. So He goes to the Father. And that is also a portion that is a, a revelation to us that when we go to the Father, we can do the same works Jesus same way, Greater same works, works than great. what He did. Because there's more do. of us. Now, that didn't say go to the bishop. No. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the presbyter. No. And if I get permission... I'm going to go to uh, my covering. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. right. If they give me enough permission, now, right. then I'm going to be able to have... I'll have, I'll have blessings. Mm -hmm. I'll have power. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I submitted to, you know, brother, give me more money from some other town. Right. right. And I'm right. just telling you, it's, it, that is not God's yeah. plan. Right. Amen. You know, you mentioned that, and that... <laughs> you know, I, I get amazed... First, I'm amazed at, at how all this topic came about from the four of us uh, but the next section of my notes was we do not need a man we need a revelation of the power that works in us Amen. Mm -hmm. you know awesome. that's what we need right. for what you just mentioned we do not need a man but we need a revelation on, of the power that works in us right. scriptural basis Ephesians chapter 1 15 through 23 said, why should we look to any man for protection and covering if I had any revelation at all of who I am in Christ? And I'm just reading verbatim from my notes here. Any revelation that the blood contains the power of God. If I have any revelation at all of the finished work of Christ because of His blood and His finished work, we are above all principalities and powers. Mm. You know, what we need is a revelation of who He is and what He did now and not later. Mm -hmm. How do you feel on that, Preston? Yeah, you know, when we look at the Trinity, we see that the Holy Spirit never glorified or pointed to Himself, but He glorified and pointed to Christ. Right. Only. And, or to the Father. And we see Christ doing the same thing. He never boasted or pointed to Himself, but He's always really glorifying the Father. We see the Father doing the same thing. And what's so beautiful about that, that's the very nature of God because there is no arrogance in the Trinity. There's no selfishness. They're always exalting and pointing to each other because the definition of love is they never seek its right. own. And so that's... What we're sharing is really the calling of any leader and any pastor is always pointing, always grounded and rooting the people in Christ to have their own faith, to have their own relationship with God, their own call of God. Not, 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 not for them to look to us and not, not that um, we're putting pressure on 
the people to fulfill our vision, but we're unlocking the calling vision within the people. Right. Mm -hmm. And the empowering them. Yes, empower, empower them, equipping them. You know, them. another thing also we're talking about the intercessors or prayer covering, you know, me, right. me and my wife have taught on that in the Philippines for man how many months and and uh, since learning this grace, you know, radical grace and the new covenant, I've learned a lot. You know, the best way to look at it, having a covering, is you look at Hebrews 7.25. You know, that Jesus Christ, our high priest, mm -hmm. right. He ever interceding for us mm -hmm. right. day and night. You can mm -hmm. never, I mean, that's, that's next to the Father. Mm -hmm. And even to that. And you don't put point, anybody in between him. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you look at it, Ephesians 2.6, Brother Leroy, and says, and God raised us up together with Him, right. and made us sit together with Him. Right. That's a privilege, right there. Mm -hmm. right. You know, again, you go back. Focus on Christ. It's not about me. It's not about the structure, the system, and the way we do it. I believe you will find out. We will find out if you're looking for a, a, a shepherd, or a pastor that, that that feeds truth, radical truth, radical grace. Is when you ask him a question, you ask for counsel. He will always tell you. You listen to the Holy Spirit. That's good. You That's listen good. to the yeah. Word. Yeah. And when they begin to tell you, you listen to me, you do what I say. Submit There's no me. balance yeah. of that. that. That is imbalance. That is focusing on themselves. Mm -hmm. Because why? Even if you have great pastor, great shepherd, and they begin to talk about themselves, their experience, guess what happened? The Holy Spirit will expose them because He's a jealous God. Mm -hmm. Somehow, down the road, He will allow you to see. The Holy Spirit will allow you to see about the person right but because but when you see the person pointing you to christ that's a good pastor. Mm, that's right. good always yeah, yeah, always yeah. detest on that one you the bible says in in, in first john 4 yeah. it says verse 1 it says test mm -hmm. every spirit yeah. with a God different the different spirit yeah so the scripture will always tell us look to the scriptures mm -hmm. don't yeah. always believe what they said or even what we said even paul said if we or an angel from heaven Right. So you know you gotta you gotta you gotta look at don't believe everything we said you look at for yourselves. Yeah, we'll we'll close with uh, that thought, uh, <laughs> Alan, which is good, and we'll just give you a scriptural reference on that. If my memory is correct, I believe it's around uh, Acts 17, verse uh, 30, 31, somewhere in there. Anyway, re read that, and Paul pre pre preaching in Berea, and he says. The, essentially told them to be a Berean or I'm telling you be a Berean they went home daily and studied the word to see if what Paul said was true you do the same thing <laughs> see if what we are saying is true see where the Holy Spirit leads you is he going to lead you to man or is he going to point you to Jesus thank you for watching Not Without Blood we hope you'll join us again be blessed not Without Blood has been brought to you by the donations of the Crossway Ministry sponsors. If you'd like to join our sponsors in support of our ministry, contact us at 256-227-5777. We invite you to join us each and every study to grow in the knowledge of the finished work of Christ. Once again, that number is 256-227-5777.